Social sector organizations are conservative in nature. They did not set out wanting to conquer the whole of their area of beneficiaries. But something has changed. I've referred to some of you before with a conversation I had with a lady entrepreneur, and by the way, 60% of social sector organizations are led by ladies, and I'm thrilled to see that that's just about the representation we have here. She came into my office and she deals with homelessness in the UK. And we started chatting and I asked, well, how many beneficiaries are you helping now? How many homeless people are you helping to move out of homelessness? She said 7,000 a year. So I asked the question, how many would you like to help? She said, I've never been able to think of that question. I said, well, today, if you decide that you want to help a greater number, how many are there in the UK? She said, 30, 35,000 homeless people. I said, well, go away and think about how many of those do you feel you can help with your model? And then you can raise the money today. You can go to social finance in the UK and you can raise the money. The world has changed. So social sector organizations have to adjust to the fact that they can now attract investment capital, that they can use the layer of grants that they receive from MacArthur and Ford and Rockefeller and others and treat it as the base of their balance sheet, the cheapest form of equity, raise social impact bonds on top of that, raise debt to purchase assets if they need to, on top of that, and plan for the future. We talked about the $12.5 million pathways, SIB. How many social sector organizations can go and raise $12 million in grants? The $30 million South Carolina, SIB. And the United States will lead the way in scaling up as it does in every financial discipline. Michelle, with a smile, uh, said the UK is getting concerned about being overtaken, even though in many areas we were the first to get going. And it's true. And the friendly rivalry between our countries is a form of help to each other. That's what we can provide through the GSG. That's what I did in visiting your countries when ministers asked me what's going on in the rest of the world. So, social sector organizations are the engine for delivering services. Their model, which is able to attract the support of the community more easily than a profit model. Their model in my view, will lead to the greatest innovation in terms of delivering services. Profit with purpose may also find ways of selling services, but a lot of it will be focused on product, on taking advantage of market growth and margins and cash flow to fund expansion, like Orcam a tech for good company in Israel, which invented a pair of spectacles for the blind, which whispers into your ear the name of the street sign, the products on the supermarket shelf, the banknote in your hand. Just raised $41 million at a $600 million pre-money valuation. So, I believe that the engine of this revolution is going to be both social sector organizations and profit with purpose. It's not one or the other. They will define their roles 
And if we have management within social sector organizations that begins to target the largest number of beneficiaries that they can help, it'll be a complete change from the past. It'll be a revolution in itself.